What's up friends, welcome to another video of the MD Journey where my job is to help you succeed in med school with less stress. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to present your patients to your attendings and your residents. Now, learning how to do an awesome patient presentation requires a lot of time, a lot of practice, and it's just gonna be a lot of materials. For the sake of time, I'm gonna break them into two different videos. So this video is gonna be the top tips you need to do well on your patient presentation, and the next video is gonna be a step-by-step -step guide on how to present your patients to your attendings and your residents. But before we get started, if you're new to this channel and you like what you hear, then give a like to this video. Consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions about medical school, I'm putting out weekly videos and weekly content on the blog. So just go ahead and comment down below any questions you have. But no more time to waste, let's get started. So what are the top things that you have to be aware of to just have awesome patient presentations when you're on the wards? So I was fortunate that I had a lot of clinical experience before I started my third year rotations. And so when I started my first couple of rotations, I just had a good amount of experience presenting to attendings and residents. And I was able to build on that. So I didn't have as steep of a learning curve. So I'm gonna teach you what I knew before I even started my rotations and then what type of tips that I've also learned throughout the process. And regardless of where you are in med school, if you started your rotations already or if you're about to pretty soon, hopefully these tips will help you shorten your presentations, make sure they're also very concise and making sure that the content is something that attendings want to actually listen to. So the first tip that you have to know when you're presenting your patients is try to get in the mindset as if you were telling the patient's story. That's what we're doing anyways. The patient is coming to the hospital or the clinic with some type of a complaint. And so now it's your job as the person who gained that information through the interview is to be able to tell that story to somebody that wasn't in that room. So one thing that's gonna happen to every medical student is your resident and your attending are going to check out very early on into your presentation. Sometimes they actually have a good reason and sometimes it's because your presentation is just boring and not cohesive. So to avoid this problem whenever you can, just make sure you're telling a story that has a good flow. It's much easier to listen to somebody if they can tell me what symptoms the patient had, how many days they've been having it, and kind of what their progression has been. Has it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? And the main question is, why are they at the hospital or the clinic today? What led them throughout their illness to finally come in and get medical help? And so there's two good ways that you can present your patients that still has good flow. One of them obviously is to do it in chronological order and present your patient's symptoms and conditions and eventually why they had to come into the hospital and clinic in the first place. And number two, and this is one I like to use a lot, is presenting your patients history through the symptoms and complaints they have, especially if a lot of their illnesses and issues are not within the same time frame. So they may be complaining of a headache for a couple of months, but they may be complaining of back pain for a few weeks, but they still may be at your clinic for those conditions. So it's very easy to tell your attending, well, they come in complaining of these three symptoms and regarding the back pain, this is what she tells me. Regarding the headache, this is what she tells me. And you can kind of move on and so forth. So that was the first part of this tip, but the second part is to tell your story and pointing your audience towards your differential diagnosis. You wanna try your hardest when you start your clinical rotations of getting in the habit of thinking of one, what the patient has, and two, what you're gonna do for it. And it's much easier to do if your presentations reflect that. If your presentation is basically what the patient told you, that's fine, but you're gonna be what my school likes to call a reporter but you can actually make your presentation even better by thinking of the management and the direction you wanna take this patient and using your presentation of directing your audience towards that. So for example, if you think your patient has heart failure, then you can tell the story of the patient, how they got here, and you can tell their symptoms and their review of systems, things they have, and eventually you're gonna be directing your audience, you're attending your resident into the plan that you have for this patient's most likely heart failure. So not only make sure that you have a story that you can tell that has a very good flow, which is gonna be very easy to follow, but make sure your story kind of leads your audience to the final plan that you're gonna have for that patient. So the second thing that I like to think of when I present my patients is to ask myself, what would I want to hear? More often than not, you're going to have a patient who you're attending has seen something very similar to 
in their lifetime, probably numerous times. If we're talking about our heart failure patient, your heart failure patient is probably gonna sound like the thousands of patients they've probably seen already. But as the attending, they're still gonna to wanna to know some very key findings about that patient. So ask yourself for every patient you have, what would my attending want to hear? And more importantly, if I was attending, what would I want to hear? If your patient comes in, for example, with a broken foot, then you don't need to spend an excessive amount of your presentation on your abdominal exam findings. Now that may seem very obvious, but I see this on a daily basis and sometimes I catch myself doing this, where you're presenting things just for completeness sake, but has nothing to do with the plan or the complaints of the patient. So to help keep your presentations short, always ask yourself, would I want to hear this if I was attending? If the answer is no, then make sure you don't include it. So the third thing that I like to do to help me with my presentations is that I'll write my patient presentation out in bullet point form. And so on a scratched piece of paper, I will basically have one bullet point, which will be my opening one-liner. My second bullet point will be some of the very significant things about their current medical history or their current symptoms that I want to talk about. And then my next couple of bullet points may just be the physical exam and their labs that I want to make sure I hit. And these bullet point presentations are great for me to just jot down everything that I want to include in my patient presentation in the order and flow that I want to discuss it. But it's not in complete sentences. Often it's abbreviated. Sometimes it's not spelled right. Sometimes I can't even read it. But I'm not, for example, printing out my note and reading it out word for word or saying my plan just the way I wrote it in my note. If you're attending really wanted that presentation, they can just quickly read your note. They actually want you to present in a way that's much different than how you write your note. So this bullet point format really helps me just include what's important and it's something I can refer to just in case I forget. And it also helps me keep the presentation very conversational, very natural versus very monotonous. So the last thing that I'll leave you with and it's my fourth tip on how to do well on your patient presentation is make eye contact and have a conversation with your attending or your resident. Now more often than not, something you're gonna see, especially if you're new to a clinical rotation, is new medical students will read their notes like this and look up ever so often and just kind of look back and forth at their piece of paper. But if you start your presentation by making eye contact with your attending, looking down if you forget something, but continue to make eye contact, then they are forced to make eye contact back. Yes, sometimes they still look away and that's just gonna happen, but the more eye contact you make, the more conversational your presentation is gonna feel, the more less rehearsed and scripted it's gonna feel, and your attendings are just gonna pay much more attention to you. Um, they're gonna feel like you have something to say and you wanna make sure that it's heard. And uh, it's helped me make my presentations much stronger. I feel much more comfortable when I'm presenting. So try that out. Make eye contact with your attendings or your residents from the very start and try your best to keep it as much as possible. So there you guys have it. Those are my top four tips that you needed to know. In the next video, I'm gonna go step by step exactly how to present your patients. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't so already. New videos come out every Wednesday. If you want more information, check out the mdjourney.com, which has numerous 70 to 80 posts already on how to succeed in medical school I'll have a link down in the description down below but thank you guys so much for watching if you have any questions about this video or medical school in general just comment below and I'll go ahead and respond um, with either a video a blog post or just personally respond to your question whatever is fast is the easiest for you um, but again thank you guys so much I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video take care my friends